Hi everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be learning what we need to know to design network services or components that talk to the network in Android. So the service class performs long running tasks in the background, has no interaction with the UI and can create three different types of services, foreground ones, background ones and bound ones. The foreground service works on anything that is noticeable to the user and it will keep on running even if the user is not interacting. To be used when the task is immediate, important and must complete. Examples are music players or download managers which must display notifications the user can use to control, stop or pause the service itself. A background service works on anything that is not noticeable to the user, hence it will not have a user interface at all. To be used to perform tasks that are not noticed by the user, like for example logs rotation, disk defragmentation or disk consistency check routines. Bound services are used to design client-server architecture that exist when a client, which may also be an activity, uses bind service to connect. In fact, this type of service does not run indefinitely unless the service is started and bound. So what that means is that with the previous example, you had to create code to start and stop the service. Here, you need to create code to bind the service. But if you want to create a service that runs indefinitely, but also accept connection for clients, then you have to create code for starting, stopping the service, and also to do the bind. As a started service cannot return results or values to its starting component, so the client, Use a bound service when you need this type of communication. So this class uses the application main thread, does not create its own thread, and it does not run in a separate process unless you specify otherwise, which might cause your application to become unresponsive. The intent service class extends the service class and runs in a separate worker thread. It's designed to continue working even in absence of foreground controlling activity. It can be scheduled. It can interact with the UI, although this might be difficult. This class cannot run tasks in parallel as intents are included in the message queue where they are then executed one after the other. Running task on an intent service cannot and should not be interrupted to be used when the service has to be started according to certain condition. For example, you want to start the service just when you have a network connectivity or certain times of the day or just when you have enough memory. The async task class. This is a class that executes tasks asynchronously which are then interrupted if the activity that launched them is suspended. It can run background tasks reporting any progress to the UI thread. By default, tasks are executed on a single thread to avoid issues, although parallel execution can be achieved by using the execute on executor with the right parameters. Like many other classes, when the screen rotates, the activity that started the async task is destroyed, making the running task no longer able to communicate with the activity in order to send updates. To avoid this sort of issue, you might want to lock the screen orientation, prevent the activity from being recreated, and so on. The async task is generally a better option than intent service if the UI needs updating. In conclusion, 
this class allows you to use thread without having to manage synchronization. The handler thread class. This class extends thread. When a new task is posted, the handler picks it up and places it into a message queue. A looper will cycle through this queue, sending tasks to execution. The main difference between a thread and an ender thread is that the ender thread comes with the thread, a message queue, and a looper. It's already all integrated. Let's see how to implement a thread pool. So you can use the executor, which executes threads in parallel and cannot cancel submitted tasks. Or you can use the executor service, which simplifies the executions of tasks in asynchronous mode, can cancel and monitor submitted tasks. Or you can use the thread pool executor, which runs a task from a queue when a thread in its pool becomes free. Now that we know how to design network services, let's have a look at those libraries and classes that are going to be doing the actual networking job for us. So we have the HTTP URL connection, which is derived of URL connection, is specialized in HTTP. Each instance is used to make a single request. HTTPS URL connection extends the previous one and it specializes in HTTPS. Download Manager manages in the background long-running HTTP downloads, can survive up restart, and can force downloads to go through Wi-Fi. The network class can channel traffic to a given network on a socket basis through a target socket factory or process-wide. The network interface class can represent a network interface with a name and a list of assigned IP addresses. And now some libraries. Volley is a library that makes working with networks easier as it can easily populate the UI over RPC type calls and it comes with support for images, raw strings and JSON file. Do not use Volley if you are working with large downloads, as this library holds all responses in memory during parsing. Requests are executed asynchronously on a different thread without blocking the main thread. Retrofit. REST client that simplifies downloading and uploading JSON. Data serialization is configurable. Glide. Image loader library supporting animated GIF and loading caching of images. This framework manages memory and disk caching, media decoding, and resource pooling. HTTP components simplifies the creation of custom client and server HTTP services based on blocking and non blocking IO models, and much more. OK, HTTP. HTTP 1 and 2 client for Android with transparent GZIP, which shrinks download size and also comes with response caching. Picasso, image loading library. Today, then, I'm not going to be showing you any code, and that's because you can already find a very large amount of examples and free software on the internet that do that very well. I just instead want to you to get focus on the architecture. So I hope you've enjoyed my class. Please uh, like my video and subscribe and click on the bell. Thank you very much.